Good evening and welcome to tonight's Iris Ed Cl class. Day two of five weeks of on online driver's ed. I'll wait till people, people stop, pop on. So please sign in with your phone. And you can sign in with the comments section here on YouTube. I'm going to wait till everybody kind of gets on before, before I kind of review what, what happens today with class and homework and driving and, and then get into tonight's class and i hope to be a little little bit more efficient in my management of getting you all, you all the material uh the other thing that was discussed discussed since, since about half half of you or almost half of you here here you must tell me especially especially on the cost for youtube if you're, you're getting an echo one of the, the problem of operating this program that I have and I have a soundboard that tracks whether it's coming through the mic or coming through through the computer so, so we've got mics go, going so sometimes the echo is what you hear from this mic, mic trying to pick what's coming thing through the computer I try to pick it up there's a little switch that's illuminated with a check mark um, um, so, so, like I said, please sign in too with comments here so I can see up on the board. board. I've, I've got a box of, of all my videos that I'm going to use tonight with my PowerPoints. I've got music that I play here at the beginning of class or on the left. I've got, I can add uh, uh, things up here on Facebook here. here. Look at that. I can th throw this up here. Uh, that is one of the problems that I found found last. Some of you have not joined the Facebook page. Page. Let me just dro drop this in for a second. I can. I just had ju just a moment ago. Let's see if I I can find it again. Oh, there it is. All right. This is what what you should be looking for. For if you not not have joined t driving school remote driver education class, okay, that is is specifically for for you. This is this is where you're gonna find uh, the the homework post, and this this is what I want to do when I when I release you at nine nine thirty. Uh, this is where uh, if you've got questions, I can answer an them. Um, my phone, we can text back and forth like we did last night. We can also set it up drive times, things like um, um, in the last hour. Or comes to this sheet right here. Okay, the reading that I want you, want you to do, and, and it says questions. There's there's only like nine or ten. And they're really simple questions, and and I'd like you to just to give me a brief rundown. You don't have don't have to write the whole question. And um, I guess I'm talking talk to you. Uh, you did did fantastic with your notes. You went you went above beyond beyond of what you, what you need to uh for me but that's fine fine if that works for you you can you can do that but uh, um questions just write write down number one and answer c question number two uh d whatever whatever just go down if it's fill in the blank just do that and um that will be proof that you did your reading did that chapter and then when i give you the chapter questions it's a, it's a little bit more in, in depth involved with this that i give you and uh, um the chapter readings so that's how that, that works. I'm only going to be posting uh, work, worksheets and the uh, questions that you'll be taking on your phone on, on the Mo Facebook page. But the questions from here are, are from this textbook. All right. Um, and I don't do every chapter after in the text. We will co cover every part of the, man the manual, but we'll not. We will will not do every chapter in the te textbook. Um, a few things about driving today. I was quite pleased with everybody that, that, uh, shop on time. Uh, they did quite well. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased where, where, where we're at and what we have to work on, get you to the point, point we can get your driver's license. Uh, uh, hopefully aren't too nervous. I told you that, that most of it would be the first, first time out. So, so for the review that have not signed up for drive time, jump on in. Uh, the water's fine. I don't bite. Uh, it's part of the driver I reset probably do you 10 hours. So let's continue with scheduling. I do. I do some time t tomorrow afternoon. Uh, not write it down. 
So, so um, I've got to take a look at my phone real quick. If I, if you, you will just allow allow me to take a peek so I can, can give you a heads up. Uh, tomorrow, I have a three o'clock and four o'clock open. Uh, um, somebody wants three or three o'clock, four o'clock tomorrow. I just shoot shoot text at the end of the tonight, not right now. Now, so three o'clock, four four o'clock is open. open. Uh, tonight, according according to what we cover, uh, what is a safe driver? And ES stands for highway transportation. That sh that should be familiar to you if you did reading in the textbook. But I am behind. I was going to cover licensing. Since you are a Z program to get license, I th I thought it might be good to kind of go over the process. This has has to get driver's license, and so get some paper. Paper. I'm gonna get pretty involved with some of this some of this information. So let's kind of pop right in into uh, um, getting out of getting your driver's license. So, so we're gonna talk about um, not not only licensing, but but also uh, registration and titling. And uh, registration and titling have to do with with ownership. Uh, uh, every car that is out is out on the road needs to have um, registration. So, so license plates are tied to your registration, and registration is tied to your title. So uh, we're going to kind of go all over this. I, I think your parents will probably take care of the title, title and registration for you. You're not that far removed from probably purchasing your first vehicle. Uh, you're 16 or going to be to be seen. And I would say probably, um, you know, when you get senior year, year, year of college, pa parents now think, okay, okay, you know, do I really want to pay for airline time tickets to bring him home? Let's just get him a, a car that he can he can drive. So you're going to be going to be on your own vehicle, but probably within the next five, six years. So it, it is important that you have a basic understanding of, of some of this information. Let me get my fa Facebook thing out of the way. I forgot that I, that I left that up. So excuse me, excuse me for a minute while I cl close out on this. Boom, gone. All right. Um, what I want you to write down: driving is not a right, right considered a privilege. Not anybody can get a car and drive a car. Drive a car. Um, they require you to go through the, the process of an eye, an eye test, a written test, and a driving test. test. If you don't pass all three, you never become legal in the state to drive a vehicle, and it's that way in every state. So you you have to state that you are of a skill level level that is ne is necessary to operate a vehicle independently. So that goal is to get you to the point point where people do not have to tell you uh, what to do at traffic lights, how to make a turn. Uh, how to merge onto a, to a highway. So all, the, all these things will be coming to you through the driver's ed program and practice with this with your parents uh, well, where you, you learn to perfect, perfect that and, and go to the state to, to do your driver's test. Once you get your license, at the, at the age of 6, 17, you're still tied to your parents. So what I want you to is... At any time, your parents can reject you having a license. They can actually contact the V and say, um, "My son or daughter um, is not responsible. They do things at home or or it's, it's irresponsible, and and I don't feel like I I want to be um, signed off on their driver's license anymore." And they can renege on that, and they can take take that away. So it's like you you never had a license. So just remember, until the age of age of eighteen, parents have a lot, lot of pull. So even so, even though you do driver's license, don't don't your parents can't, can't pull back. It's kind of like kind of like ground. The state would, you know, just put a little check mark next to your name. It's not like not like you have to go through driver's ed again or get re, re licensed. But the state says, okay, okay, parents have taken away, away responsibility, liability. The manual only covers a brief amount of laws, rules, regulations. So we're gonna cover. Everything in the manual, but you may have questions that that aren't cut in the manual. Hopefully, I have the answers. Okay, I've been doing this long enough that most of the questions people ask me, I haven't have an answer for. But I, but I will tell you, I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. So if you ask me something I don't know, then I'm going to either ask 
maybe supervisor at the, the Department of Motor Vehicles. I may have to ask a police officer. Um, I know many of them. Um, they can help me out. Or I'm going to just go online and go, go to the state statutes and kind of search it and find the answer for you. But, but I want you to know there are no, no bad questions. So if there's anything that you want to, want to the answer to, feel free to ask me. Now, now, I don't want you to put it on YouTube on the comment, comment section if you think it's going to embarrass you or you think it's kind of a funny question or strange, strange question. Just send, send me a text, then it's just between, it's between you and I. But a lot of times, if you do put a quick question on the, on the YouTube comments, I don't get, get it for 30 seconds, 45 seconds. I think that's about the t time delay they have going on. Um, so, so I may not respond to it right, right off, but I will try to get to it as best I, I can. Um, the next thing, next thing I want you to go down, down to is the bullet where it says license suspension revocation. What does it mean? So I want you down, uh, write down um, um, term. And then just this reminded, reminded me, uh, for those of you that did the protest, and some, some of you haven't done it yet, don't expect to get a, get a good start. I gave you just to see what you basically knew about, about driving. I gave you questions on infant infamy that we're going to be covering here, here in class. So to make, to make you feel better, I gave, gave you a test that I want you to fail. I wanted you to do bad. I wanted to, uh, to, to show you that you don't know, know what you think you know. Most people have an idea, an idea that, you know, I can just read, I can, I can this, or I know this information already. But, but you'll be surprised that the questions that they could ask you really only come from um, reading and thinking and pondering the information that we go over. and want to commit it to your long-term memory. So please don't feel bad if you have a score of 50s, 60s, or 70s on the pre-test. It's just, just the way that is. Now, now, here's a question that could come up, come up on a test, and most people don't know what the real answer is. So license suspension and license revocation does happen when people get moving violations. One is worse than the other. Revocation is bar worse than suspension. So once you write down, down a license suspension is for a short period of time, where you pay a fine, fine, pay administrative fee, and then lose your license for a short period of time. So fine, short, short period of time, license is taken away, administrative fee you pay. Because you're under the age of 20, the three moving violations that you get, you get. You can write this down. It's in the manual. You probably had it last night. I'm not quite sure what section. It was either in 127. Your first moving violation, 20 days license suspension. Your second is 45. Ask me why they just didn't, didn't make it 40. Why they just didn't keep doubling things. But your third license suspension is 90 days. So I guess that they thought, you know, you know 20 days would be enough. And it's from that the... D receives your, your license to actually send that piece of plastic to them. Revocation is for a longer period of time. License taken away. The fine is going to be more expensive. And you may have to like retake parts of your drink test depending on how long the revocation is for. So that's just, that's just basic rundown of system of suspension. So if you, if you hear us talk about, about people getting in trouble with driving and we read their license was revoked or their license was suspended that is what it means remember that a good drive driving person is related to your attitude and driving is a complex task that requires full attention uh, i think i think that's just basic knowledge of you're you're learning to do something that you're unfamiliar with it, it does need full attention it does need you to be um put a full effort right being safe, safe behind the car. Um, the only thing that I want, want to mention here is that, that when you go for your license, the middle bullet, bullet, third bullet, must supply two forms of ID with a proper fee. The fee for your, your license is going to be, be $50. The two forms of ID need, need to be original birth certificate. And some of you have sent me, me your key or handed it to me, and I, I uh, appreciate that, so, so thank you. But you can't bring a copy to the DMV. It has to be an original. That's why I didn't want, didn't want your original. I don't want to be responsible for it. 
just need the copy. But that, but that's important for you to know. Uh, I guess I'll I'll bump up a, a few bu bullets where it says says motor vehicle licensing locations are 19 spots th throughout the state. Don't say that you learned this in my driver's driver's ed program. If anybody asks you, to, don't say you learned it from it from me. But you can go to any location for your driver's test. I, I will do that. Some some locations are more difficult than others. So think of it. When you when you north, there really isn't much for for major major highway or cities. Cities. So, if you take your test north of. Dover, North Concord, like in Tamworth, which which is near Oppy, up near near North Conway, it's going to be an easier dri driving test. It is at Epping, or Dover, or Concord. Those are the th three locations that most people go to: Con Concord, Epping, and Dover. But you you could go to Manchester. You you could go to Nashua. You could go towards Keene. So if the the DM taking too long too long at one of the locations. You can say, is there is there any location that can take me in earlier for my driving exam? And they will search out a place. You just you just gotta get there and have a little bit of a, a, a drive. But maybe the the drive would be worth it to get your license a week early. Plus, it's good practice. Your license license is good five years. Years uh, once it once it expires, then you're you're gonna have to get a renewal. Uh, we'll talk about about the renewal, but it's still fifty fifty dollars. You do, you do have restrictions on, on your license. You can only have one non-relative for the first six month, months that you drive. Now, relatives, you can have, have as many as you have cells. So you've got three seatbelts in the, in the back and a relatives in the back. But only one non-relative in, in your vehicle for your first six months. After six months, it doesn't matter how many people you have in the car, as long as long belted. Remember, under the age of 18, everybody ha has to belt it inside of a car. car. Once you're, old, you're older than they, they're in your car. If they, if they don't want to wear a seatbelt, you don't, you don't get that they're wearing a seatbelt. Then I guess, you know, you know, okay. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm fully a tr true believer, always being in a seatbelt. But, but um, once you, you give legal age, that decision is to totally up to you. Now you also also have curfew, okay, and this is up to up to age eight. So you might want to write that down. You can only drive between the hours of um, between four in the morning and one in one night. Those are the only hours you drive. When you hit one o'clock in the morning, it, it's like you know Cinderella. Cinderella okay, you're going to be turned into a pumpkin. They're going to arrest you. Um, they're going to give you a ticket if you're dri driving 101. Uh, when <laughs> so don't be um, behind the wheel are between one in the morning, four in the morning. And plus, having your parents told you there's nothing good that goes on, you know, that late at night, night you're going to get in tr trouble. So don't drive during, the, during those hours when you're under eight, 18. Right. So now, now we want the DMV. B. Complete a drive, driver's ed. You've done the, the 10 hours. You've done your observation with your parents. Everything is completed, and you're going going for your license. We've talked about uh, $50 is going to be cost for your license, but but there's applications that must fill out before you get your driver's license so to write write this note i would i would have it pleaded before i go i gave you if you take a look at at the sheet that i gave you and we talked about this this last night so let me get out of this but the sheet that i gave you when you picked up the material gives the link i showed you the link last last night that is this the link that you go to 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 download your application now do, doing online you might even be able to fill the form out on online so that would be really important too, is to get it filled out online before you um, go for your license. Uh, the parental form has to be signed by your parents. Uh, they'll probably tell you, but you can, can log on and, and down like I gave gave you the links and your driver's certificate. I will give give to you, and the and the forty hour log I showed you last last and that has to has to be filled. Remember, if you're using that, that uh, app that we talked about, um, it's ready to drive or drive ready. Uh, you have to print it out. out. I can't just show, show them the, the phone. You have to have it as a piece of paper. So remember that. that. Uh, uh, real ID, I'm going gonna to skip over. Don't have to worry about, there, about that till over. 
I believe going to now. Now I'll mention it briefly, briefly that um, the whole United States is going, is going real ID a process, which, which means you only get uh, onto airplanes and federal buildings if if you have a license with that uh, yellow circle, circle with the white star in the middle. Uh, uh, if, if you have that, you will not be allowed to fly or to get in the, in the federal bill. I believe it's after October, October sometime. But because of this COVID thing, they may even push that, push that back a bit. But I believe this year. Uh, practice driving, we're not going to talk about too much. Uh, you already know that, that you have 15 and a half. The hard part is just finding someone that will drive with you. Usually it's a parent. parent. Try not to drive, drive with anybody under the age of 25. They have to be 20, 25 years each. They have to, have to be uh, paying attention to what you're doing, doing as you're drinking. And you can only do this within in the borders of the state of New Hampshire. Now, I know some of you probably have driven in Maine, Massachusetts, and Vermont because your parents didn't know about this. this. These laws for driving are very particular to the state. So Maine, Maine students have to obey by, by what Maine ha has for their young driver, drivers. In, in Maine, they have a permit system. They can't drive unless they've got a permit. New Hampshire do that. New Hampshire just wants you to show your birth certificate when you're in the car if you get stopped. So you can't just, just go into another state that says, says you've got a permit if, if you're 16 because you don't have one, one. You can't say, well, I've got, I've got my copy of my certificate. Get, well, you're in New Hampshire anymore. anymore. You're in Maine. So don't assume where you're going to run into prob problems is you break a law if you have a crash. Because going down the run the road, nobody knows that you're not a licensed driver. They think you're a young person driving with your parents in the car. As long as you're obeying the law, the law they're going to probably leave you alone. alone. So that's why if you have it, you didn't get into trouble. They had no idea that you were that you were doing it. But but if you were speeding or you you did have a crash and into the back of somebody. Now you've got issues. Now you now you got problems. Not only with the state that you're driving in, but also your insurance company, because I believe in the print of insurance policies, it states that you must ab abide by state rules or run the risk, risk of maybe having your your insurance be, be null and void. So be very very careful. Um, um, you can draw on your parents' policy. I do know that. Okay, so it so it is ill uh, for you to be on your parents. Poly or driving on your parents' policy right now, so it's only when you go into another state. Uh, what to bring bring to other drivers test test? Um, we already talked about the two farms. Oh, make sure vehicles in good in good operating condition. It doesn't matter vehicle you you take, but I recommend you take the, take the car they're most comfortable with. Uh, if you do have a manual trans transmission vehicle, remember that, that they they will you on how well you use the shift, how well, how well you clutch. So I would find an automatic to practice with and take that. Once you get your driver's license, they do not, do not require you to come back, back and get retested on annual transmission. So once, once you get your driver's license, you're, you're good to go. You, you don't have to worry about, about a year from going back because now, now you buy a car that's a, it's a manual transmission, like a Jeep. You're good. As long as you feel comfortable, you've already shown that you know how to operate a car, you know the rules of the road, um, they don't expect you to come back, but being tested on one, you got to show, show them that you can clutch and shift. This testing site in Dover, so I didn't do all the all the testing. Uh, uh, notice the sign. Okay, do not enter. I, I will you just like for like for that drove today. You are going to be so nervous on your driving test. You're going to say, "Oh, if I screw up, my friends are, are not going to let live this down," and that's probably really true. They won't. So my, my word of recommendation or words of wisdom is don't don't tell you're going for your life, your license, because because if you don't get, then then they're gonna all ask you that. Now, did you get it? Did you get it? And they have to say no. You know they marked me off for this. They marked me off for that. And I, and I gotta go back in ten days. Okay, that's probably be not conversation that you want to have with your friends. So I'd probably keep it a secret. So. You walk through doors. You have have all your paper that we talked about. Your application, your, your green certificate for me, your personal form, your, your fifty dollars. That stuff. You got it all. Okay. Okay. Um, stand that you you have check in with the front office. 
So notice it says customer service. So you know, you're going to check with somebody and they're going to probably do the eye test right at that counter. They have you look into a machine and you have, you have the number, numbers. Now, I nor normally do this if, if we were meeting in class, but, but since we're not meeting in class, I just want to throw this, throw this out there. If you have contact, if you have glasses, I would recommend seeing your eye doctor to make sure that your eyes are fine before you go for your driver's test. Because it would be a shame to have, I mean, mean to fail the eye test and never, never, and never the chance to do the, do the written arriving that day. So normally I have you have you read in the heart so I can kind of, kind of, if I see people squinting, I'll say, well, maybe you should have your eyes checked. I kind of just do an overview of what I think people need for a, a tune up with their eyes. So I would recommend it. And by the way, if you, if you wear cunt or glasses, if you drive a car, you, you have to have them the contact in or the glass glasses on, because if you get st stopped, you don't have to have them you can actually write you up for a ticket, ticket for having them on. So just remember that, that. So if you kind of need glasses, I would ask them, can I try, try to pass the eye test without my glasses? And they usually will let you do it. And if things work out, guess what? You don't have to wear glasses when you drive. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned down at the bottom, I skipped on over it before I moved to this slide. Be well rest, rest, dress like you would for, for an interview if you're going to get a job at a market basket. Uh, clean out the car. You know, maybe put a uh, air freshener in it. Uh, um, this is a big deal. I will, will tell you right, first impressions go a long way. They really do. That most, pe most people, whether you know this or not, or not within the, the first five minutes, you, you basically make, make a impression with everybody, everybody you meet. You kind of, you know, I am up and down. You know, the, you know, the way they look, the way that they talk. Everybody, everybody that you meet. How, how are they smiling? Are they friendly? Do they look like they've got, they've got a, you know, uh, you know, a skull, you know, on their face. Are they, you know, you know do they, do they look mean? So oh, give a, give a good first session. It will go a long way. Well, people say, should I, should I talk to DMV people when they get in the car? That's totally up to you. But I find by talking to people, people, it breaks the ice. And the other thing too, I know I, I didn't play any music today when you were driving. I really wanted to, you know, communicate with you. Once you get really, really good at driving, sometimes having music, music on very low, nothing that's, you know, you know, you know, you know, rap, you know, pumping, pumping, hard beat type music, but just kind of, you know, no regular pop music on, but at a very low level, that may relax you. And I, and I believe they'll let you do that. Um, but it can't, can't be too loud. Okay, you got to communicate with the driving inspector, and you got to communicate with you. With you, anyway, we may, we may even turn the O on too, too, just to see if um you can handle the pressure of of hearing noise of being able to drive. Drive. Well, once you give them all the paperwork and they've given you the eye test, they test, give you a number, and then you basically wait. Now, now this is how things used to be. So I'm going to tell you that we've changed things a little bit. Is then you um the application online they will give you give you a date for the the eye written test so basically break break it up in three days uh, excuse me two two days the first day would be the eye, eye written so you go in and they give you a time because they don't want people waiting around so now you don't won't wait because of covid they don't want people that they don't have enough uh spacing for people so they only want a certain amount of people there so that so they'll you like 9 9 15 on friday friday that's when you need, need to be there. Do the I, do, I do the written. You pass those, pass those, then you come back for the driving another day. day. That's, the, that's the way it has been going. I don't believe they changed it. As I mentioned, there's three parts to the test that you have to uh, do. You start with the I, then you go to the written or road, and, and the road test takes about 20 minutes. It, it is not very difficult. It is not very uh, time-consuming. I mean, you got to figure, figure each time with me is an hour, an hour. That's like three, three driving tests. So anything that you, that you do, and I want you to write, you write this down, and I'm going to show, show you a test score, test score in a moment. Anything that, that you do that's open for interpretation, they'll probably mark you down on. But, Mr. Toll, I did stop at, this, at the stop line. Well, well, are you sure that you didn't go, go a little bit beyond it? 
But Mr. Toll, I, I, I was, I was going the speed limit most of the time. What do you most of the time? I, you shouldn't go five, five, seven over the, over the speed limit in your driving test. Test. Uh, I might have. Well, if they marked you down on it, you must have. They said I didn't check over my shoulder. I, I, I kind of looked, or I, I did look. Well, it doesn't matter what you say. It matters what they think and what they saw. So you've got to really prove to them to them you've done all these things and, and that you can do these things. Thanks. So I may be kind of kind of picky, um, um, but that's the way they are in the in the 50, 20 minutes that it's that they have. Let me show show you um, the written written text because they did allow, allow me to do a short video. I went I went to the V and Concord for for a conference, and they showed us back. This was this was years ago. This video is gonna probably be at five years old. Um, of what what the new testing site would because it used to be paper do written test was 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 a pay test now it, it's all computer like I, ipad you touch a sc screen and you sir so let me show, show you uh, what it looks it looks like did you notice there's a volume there's a volume here on the right we also have headphones that plug in everybody gather around you can come stand back here as well if you can't see and what it's going to do is is it walks you through each individual screen Kind of prompts you to the next screen. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, hit continue, go on to the next one. And what it does is it gives you four dates of birth. Do you know which one it is? No, I don't actually. You have to pick your date of birth to continue. So when you walk into our test room and you see five test stations, well, how do I know which one is mine? Well, number I'll one. Be right back. Jay Come on, Bill, I can get What was that? April 6, 94. Okay. April 6, 94. That'll be the bottom. Thank you. It tells you at the beginning that it's a 40 question test and that you need to get 32 to pass. Is every question based on the manual? No, it is not. Uh, there are a couple of questions in there that are required in your your curriculum that are in there that aren't in the manual. And I know that uh, Trooper O'Leary had said, stated that he had mentioned this to you folks in there. But we are getting some calls from people saying, you know, this wasn't in the manual when they have just been to driver's ed. And so it's very important that uh, you folks know that it's not just the manual that they're test tested on, it's your curriculum. So that is very important and, and that you impart that information to your people. Extremely few and far between. So it's not like it's an issue. It just, it's just something that actually cropped up recently. A sample test. Yep. What you do is at the beginning of the test here, it gives you a choice, uh, a sample test or begin test. The sample test, all that does is show you how the computer system works. So if you go ahead and hit sample test. Three, one, two, three. There we go. Shows you a picture of a horse and asks you what it is. Pretty simple. Here's a great part about this test. When you pick an answer, it's going to ask you to confirm that answer. So there is absolutely no way you can come back and say, hey, listen, I hit C and A came out. If I didn't like that answer, you could hit no. This might have to be recalibrated. We haven't used it that much, this one hasn't but, been used in a couple so, but it is the touch screen is usually instant. I'll ask you to confirm your answer. Is that correct? And at this point, because it's just a sample, it's not going to tell you if you got it right or wrong. It's just so that you know where to touch the screen and what pressure to use. Like Go ahead and begin the test. Okay, take his license away. <laughs> It's going to ask you to confirm your answer. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like a big wheel. It's 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 a big wheel.
but as you go, it'll have your time at the bottom, and there's a lot of great features that were built in with this system. Number one, the quick pass fail, like I said, when you get to the point where you no longer need to continue whether you're passing or failing, it'll let you know. Um, skipping the question portion, if the power goes out, here's a great question. When this system stops, and we've had it happen a couple times already, it stops the time, stops you at that question. When the power comes back on, you go back to your machine and you start with the date of birth all over again, and then as soon as you select the first question you left on, the time starts up again. And we've been doing this since, uh, we've had this system implemented here since April, and I think we've had maybe three people time out on tests. It doesn't happen very often. Can we have video take all things so that you can have 30 of the questions? Yeah. Can we do that? All, all, all what, 2,000 uh, different tests that you have? <laughs> you get the time. Yeah. My students need all the help they can get, Jake. Come on. Yeah. You, know, you, you know what it was like, Jake? Come on. I'm just afraid Gordon's going to end up by losing his license. Just going really well, how do you know what recognize? <laughs> because you can see the yes change. Oh, I see. Yep, okay. it depresses it. Okay. This side is... This is a, what they call a computer. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, these it's, this, this test is not an has a lot more visual aid than the, than the, 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 the paper mm -hmm. test did. <laughs> hey, what are you doing in your lifetime? <laughs> Gives you the option to enlarge the picture so you can see it. If you actually touch any portion of the Okay, you can see, the, see that by look, looking at some of the questions, like the last one. Of the questions, 10 will be on signs. I mean, some of you should know what that sign is. Okay, do not enter an enter sign. That's why I asked you on the pretest what you had you had to acknowledge, uh, because that's 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 the driving test. And really, and like they said, there are like two thousand. They can have make up like two thousand different types types of tests. So they've got a big, huge, huge database of, of questions that they can ask. So, so it's not only what's in the, man, the manual, it's what I'm giving, giving you here in class. This is why it's so important to take good notes, uh, to write things down, down because the things that I'm tell, telling you aren't even in the textbook in, in responsible driving or, or the manual. It's what the state has told us to, to get out to you for, for information. Uh, so, you know, you know, take good notes, pay attention, and you should do well. A couple of features I want to kind of highlight. Uh, skip over, over questions you don't know, though. They'll come back at you at the very end of the, te the test. I, I do not get caught up in looking at how well you're do doing. I know they're scoring, scoring every question. So I know people get really nervous when they th think they got the right answer and they look and they go, oh, no, I got it wrong. wrong. And then you get those nervous sweats like, oh, I'm going to fail my driver's test. And, and then you start, you know, overthinking every other every question after that. Uh, very rarely does, rarely does someone out. Like they said, they give you 40 minutes, 40 minutes. I give you plenty of time, time, all the quizzes that I give you just so you get in the habit, habit of having a, having a time limit. Um, and usually it's about, they're giving you 40 minutes, so it's a minute for every question. And normally from what I hear, everybody's, do, everybody's doing 40 questions in around 15 minutes. And, and I looked like night. Everybody there that took the pretest 30 questions, I don't think there's a single one, one of you that over 12 minutes. 12 minutes. So it moved kind of, kind of quickly because you read it, you look at the answers, you do um, the, pro the process of elimination, and you come up with what you think the best answer is. And, th and think about it. If you've studied and you've gone through driver's ed, most of these questions, the minute you read it, you don't even need to look at what, what they've given you for answers. You probably know what it is. It is. And then you just try to, try to match it up with what you know. So it, it, it does allow you to move through it pretty quick. Uh, this is a score sheet. And I just want to kind of point point out everything that, that is blacked out on the score sheet. I don't know if you, you can enlarge this at, at all. Uh, I, I know on my computer screen, it's only about half of my computer screen is showing me what's up here. But I'm just going to go over real quick, real quick. Start a vehicle, visual, visual option, steering, brake, braking, sig signals, engine control if you're in a manual transmission. Turning left and run right has its own category. Speed control, following distance, sign signals and pavement markings, giving the right of way, parking, and lane usage. So those are the categories where they can mark and mark you off. Notice they have they have columns. They need some improvement. 
poor and automatic failure. They cannot fa fail you any of those er errors that are blanked out. So once you've passed the written test, they give you that piece of paper off to the right that says no before you go. So you're sitting in the car, car and they tell you to ha hang that from the rear view mirror. It says you will be tested on, on ability to maintain your position within your lane. Ability to safe interval both front and rear. That's why have you checked the mirror, the mirror so much? Ability to change lanes, giving adequate warning to others. Drive to find is three to four seconds. Correct signal use. Turning them on off at the completion of a, of a lane change. You're going to encounter stop stop signs, traffic lights, pedestrians, and emergency vehicles. You will be turning left and right. So this is why the first time out, I'm out, how you do with your, with your turn. I got to make sure you're making good ones. You will be asked to perform at least one parking. Now, when driver's ed, you can write this down. The four types of parking that will be going over. I will teach you how to angle park. Perpendicular park. That's 90 degree degree parking. What you have in front in front of high school. So when, so when you get in the Z car at the high school, we're in a in a perpendicular park parking spot. 90 degree parking. I will teach you parallel parking, and I will teach you teach you how back go backwards into a perpendicular parking spot like at the high school. Those are the only four ty types of parking that you can do. I have no idea what which one they're going to make you do. So I'm going to make sure that you are well schooled and have a, have a basic concept of, of all four type types of park. So no matter what they ask you to do, you you're going to go. Oh yeah, I can remember, do, remember doing that with Mitchell, and and hopefully, um, I have taught you well enough that you can maneuver the vehicle into the, to those areas. That the test is, like I said, very long or that difficult if you take take your time, think about what, what they're looking for, and just perform. I want you to look at look at your drive test as as it performs. Okay, you you are performing, and they're judging you just like in the like in the Elks. They, they uh, a nice skater, uh, eight point eight. The next judge says nine point two. So of course, someone else that test is giving you the road test may grade you grade you more harsh. So someone else could be more lenient. You just don't know, but you want to make sure that you get above an eight. Okay, write, write that down. To pass your, pass your drive test of the, of the four questions, you have to answer, answer 30 correct. That's going to give you 80. Once the, te the test hit 80%, you, you do not go on to any more questions. My, my son, I can remember, he did the computer test. My two daughters did the written ones. But my son only got to question 34. He only missed two, two questions. So, you know, that's why I think a lot of, a lot of people are doing it in rec record time. It's because they don't even, don't even answer 40 questions. They're getting the really early. The same thing with, thing with driving. You've, um, um, to get an, get an 8% on your score sheet here, the minute you get a 79, 78, your test is over. So don't get worried. Um, the only thing I want you to know here is you need an operator's license. Please write that, that down. You mentioned youth operator license, which is just this group group. Allows you to drive a vehicle up to 20,000 pounds. Put that down. Why is that important? Because you're going to be leaving, leaving soon once you graduate high school, maybe college. And some of you may have to use a U-Truck use a use a to get furniture to apartments, to dorms. You can drive those. That's legal. It's under 20, 26,000. Some of you want a motorcycle license. That's totally different. You don't have to take to take a written, but you do have to take to take a motorcycle driving test, where they put you in a parking lot and go through cones, phones for balance, and stopping ability and acceleration. Motor driven cycle. If you never want to get a car license or a motorcycle license, the next one from there, you're gonna have to get a scooter license. Yes, you do. If it's it's got five horsepower, you, you gotta get it. Moped. License is really, is really operator's license, but what they're, what they're doing is testing you on the moped. The same course uh, that, that you use for the motorcycle, you're going to use for the motor-driven driven cycle and open license thing. But just know the operator, basically. Commercial driver's license are for, for people driving large trucks, so you have to be 18. So that's the only thing you need, you need to know about that. License restrictions, there's a whole bu bunch of them here. Uh, uh, bottom one, I, 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 uh, has has been changed. I, I, no, I think, think that's what it is now. It used to be Z. So I did change, did change it. 
Uh, the one that I want that I want to remember is B, corrective lenses, because I have eyeglasses. Some of some of I know have eyeglasses. That's probably the most important one to know. So please write that down. The rest of them probably don't, don't apply to you. But under, understand that if you ever you ever become a handicap, a lot of these these have to do with disabilities. That we need we need to know people have spe special equipment inside the car that would would allow drive. And if they don't have that equipment in the in the car, then they are driving illegally. All right. I have driven with people that are paraplegics. They have no use of their legs. Yes, yes. I have dri driven with a paraplegic. I've driven with someone that is an amputee. Yes, they can dri drive. We have modified things that we have have in the vehicle that will al will allow them to drive. That's all it is. Your license, as we mentioned earlier tonight, runs out on the fifth year from your date of birth. Um, it will, your expiration date will be on your license. The cost is $50 every time that you renew it. So two months before your license expires, you'll be sent, sent a reminder in the mail. Remember, it is, it is your responsibility to get your license. So the question is, question is this is my sister because she moved, moved um, back here to here to Timshire, and she, she didn't uh, switch over her license, which is like like an expiration. You'll kick it. So just realize that, that you could get arrested. They could handcuff you. Yes, for driving on expired license. I believe sometimes it can be a handcuff situation. Um, sometimes they're nice, nice and they don't do it. But I all know that they do. They do make me do it. So don't get to the point where you're driving being six years after after your license is done, you know, expired. Uh, this you a new need to know for the midterm. Anyone driving a motor vehicle in New Hampshire must has to have with valid driver's license and re registration. Now the registration certificate is in your glove of compartment, and that that shows part of who is the car. It also tells a, a lot about vehicle, and you know the registration. Uh, I mean the VIN number, vehicle identification number, um, where you where you live, what's a two door or four door, all that good stuff is on your registration, and we'll talk about that. In a moment, uh, uh, title. I'm gonna go over really, really quick. Um, so that title shows ownership of a vehicle. Uh, to get a get a title, will cost you twenty twenty five dollars. So if you buy a, a car on Christ, um, the owner's title will be assigned signed to uh, uh, backside. I think I've got this on the here's we go. Here's a title title. So over on the right hand side, where it says previous own owner series. So you bought it from Craigslist. From a guy Lee, he he signs up at the top, up, and signed down down below his signature on that that square. And now you take the title to, to the town clerk, clerk, and will make out a title in your name name. So right now, that title is made out to the person that that lives Lee, um, but it shows that you bought the vehicle with the odometer reading on that title and the date that you per purchased the vehicle. So that's the title. Looks pretty official, doesn't it? So that show, shows who owns a vehicle. That's a title. If it's a new car, car you get from the, the dealership. Okay, registration. So you take your title, title, and you have and you have to go to the tech clerk and register the vehicle. So all cars, new and used, have to be registered every year. So write that down. Title is only once. It's when you buy the car. You don't have to title every year. Registration, you've got to registrate your car every year, and it varies varies on the amount according to the, the value of your vehicle and how new it is. So, so some it could be a couple hundred dollars. Some years, some years it could be hundred dollars when it gets gets drilled. So just know that's how they do do it. So, so you're given 60 days once you purchase. And that's what, what a registration, that's what's in your glove compartment. So registration total was $43.20. This was taken year and years ago, 2000, and so it's not, not that cheap anymore. Anymore, it's going to be a little bit more than that. So on the registration, it's the type, the price, what, what the uh, vehicle is, is really worth, and your license plate number will be on the registration. Okay, okay. so that's important for you to know. No. Um, um, when do you get your, your car registered? Okay. Okay. Well, register it when you get the till. It doesn't have to be. Let's say. Let's say it's October, but your birthday is in May, so they're going to register your vehicle when you buy it in October, and they're only going to do it for about four months, or from October to, to May, whatever, whatever months that is. Um, then you got to go go back and, and get it 
for a full year. So every just just know this every year year you start on your uh, birth month, and when you get your license plate, it's just a random thing. They, they just pull it out of a box and give you the, the number. If if you want vanity plates, which will cost more, I think it's a little, little under hundred dollars, but if you want vanity plates, you have to make application from four one. I'll try to find out actually. It says, it says here a dish forty dollars on regu regular regular registration. So I'll have to find out what regular regular registration nation is. It could be five or forty bucks. So it could be total around around e ninety bucks. That's what that is. The other thing that I want you to remember is that anything that you have at home that's motor motorized and has a license plate, your, your campers, your motorcycles, your uh, uh, machines, but anything, anything that has plate has to be registered, and it has has to be registered on your birth, birth month. So. so be nice to your parents on their their break because you may be giving them a, them a card, and you know giving your dad a T-shirt. Uh, well, he has this three cars in the driveway to register. He's got a boat, he's got a camper, and he's got a motorcycle that that he uses against. He is forking out a ton of money for all those things. Okay, okay. An expensive, expensive month. Your birth month month will it'll make you go broke as you get older. So parents have all that all that. Stuff. You know, kind of feel bad for them. It's kind of nice. Kind of nice. Got all those things, but it's no fun right now to check back every month. Vehicle inspection. Um, just, just I want you to know that you need you need to know that vehicle has to has to be safe, working or to pass this inspection. Uh, uh, inspection stations are th throughout the seat. They have an official a, a symbol. Um, let's see if I can find it. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. But the price of cost um, it varies. They can. They can charge whatever they want, but they've got to, got to have it posted like this picture that I took. Um, a lot of times I have here, ask for, for any repairs that they do. If they've got to repair your car to get an inspection sticker on, sticker on it, ask them for, for parts back so so you know that they actually did it. Did it. Um, if you don't want them to do the work, find somebody else. Somebody else. We're, you're not re required to have the person that inspects your car do the work. I'm a firm believer to going places that... Um, You've heard good good reviews from that they're AAA affili affiliated. So if you have any pro problems, you can file a grievance with AAA. Try to get your money money back, get it reduced reduced a little bit. But I would not not just go to uh, somebody that I I don't know. I skipped over this and I don't want to go over it because there's so much. Just realize that to make sure that vehicles are safe. They look. It's gonna take a half hour to an hour. They check everything: lights, dusters, your your frame, brakes, your windows, your hearing. Um, it's pretty involved. It's it's pretty involved. Uh, I'm not gonna require you to remember all this stuff for any type of, of a test. I just want you to know they're looking at all, all uh, parts of your vehicle that relate to keeping you safe or allowing you to drive well. Okay. Don't care that there's a rip rip in the seat. They they don't care, you know, if the radio radio's not working. Radio has no has nothing to do with safety. They do care maybe maybe um, um, if a backup light has a bulb that's out. They do care if um, the emissions. There's an emission testing. They want to make sure there's not too much much pollutants going out into the environment. So so they do uh, check your exhaust. Um, um, you get stickers that you need to put to put on your license plate, so that, so that you've got a four. That, that means it's April. Uh, this car was was registered in 2017, so they've got the year on one side. They've got the month. So when you see a police officer standing outside toll booth. A lot of people have wondered that. Why is there a state trooper hanging out and out near a toll booth side? They're not looking for people people that are running through the, the toll booth without paying. Although although you know I guess that that does happen. He's usually usually dead at the beginning beginning of the mind of how many people haven't inspected the car. So that's what they're looking for registration inspection, and now your inspection sticker is in the bottom left corner of your vehicle. And don't fake it. Don't try to make your own. Your own. That look kind of cheap, doesn't it? So that is licensing. So kind of went through that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. 
I guess I made it a little bit longer than I had wanted. But then again, I seem to be long-winded right now. So let's go go to HTS. This was part of your reading. So I do want you to write down the acronym HTS. H stands for, stands for Highway Transportation System. So we're going to take a look a little, a little about the history of, of roads and vehicles, uh, where we've come from and where we're headed. All right. So the first part, get those cars. And I actually found an old video, and I was going to put it in, in tonight, but I knew I was, I was a little bit behind, so this class, class is not going to get video. I've got a video of uh, New York City in uh, 1940. It's kind of cool, cool seeing the cars, cars and the paint on the pavement looks like, like and pedestrians crossing the, the street. I just wanted to show, show you here is that in the early 1900s, there weren't very many vehicles out on the road. There were more horse, horses, um, and, and most cars were in metropolitan areas. Only cities had vehicles. Once you get about 100 miles out of a city, very rarely, rarely would you see a car uh, in the early 1900s. It's, it's, it's had money. Uh, so, so, you know, Boston, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Detroit, Detroit where the, where the is L.A., uh, were places where we found roads. And if you've got cars, then you need pavement. So there really wasn't a lot of paved roads either. But if we kind of fast, fast forward to where we are now, we've got really, really more cars than there are licensed drivers. I would almost bet right now, if I was to, I was to ask you, how many of you have, have multiple car, cars in the driveway? You, you may even more cars, cars in your drive than you have licensed dri drivers. Because your parents have a truck for the dump, your parents have, have you know a vehicle that they use for fun, like a convertible or Jeep, and then they got their work car. Um, people start co collecting and, ha and having one vehicle, but, but it wasn't always that way. Um, I come from from a family that had a dealership. This was my grand grandfather's dealership ship in Rochester. Um, usually, one fa family had a car. It wasn't wasn't like what we have today. Uh, most people paid for the car in full, although some did take out credit. Uh, and, and you used the car for work. It wasn't for pleasure. It wasn't for going to the beach and to the movies. Mo most of the time, your dad had it uh, uh, for work. And it wasn't for, for a whole student to, to you know go with his friend, friends to the movies. You, you basically had parents drive, drive you there or you walked um, because, because you're probably close to town. And you bought local. Uh, you, you know, nowadays people will travel hundreds of miles. They even buy their car online. Uh, car, car mix, Carvania, or whatever they, they've got. It's incredible what we can do with purchasing cars. Um, um, let me to the bottom of this picture here. I just, I just wanted to. Show, this was from from my, my father's dealership. Yep. At the bottom of that invoice, to buy a brand new car, car was thirty five hundred dollars. Spanking brand new. And by the way, I did look online. Uh, for anybody that still has has this car, it's it's like six times this amount. It's it like over over twenty thousand dollars if you if you want to buy this right now. That's in just rest regular shape. If you, if you had it restored, it would even be more. So cars can if you you know to take care of them retain its value. But I mean three four hundred dollars. I mean. Goodness, you're going to be paying, you know, you know three times or ten times that much just for your first first year wallet. Okay, and this is a car, the car that someone's probably have for five years. But nowadays, look what look what we got. A brand new brand new Tesla is caught and cost you you thousand, hundred thousand for a performance mill. The cars that your parents have in the have in the, in the I'm sure are probably probably be thirty and fifty thousand dollars. That's the average price of an automobile. Now, if you get a real small, tiny, tiny car, car um, you might find it in the uh, low 20s, um, but it's expensive. expensive. Think about it. You're going to be driving for the next 50, 60, 70 years. You're soaking, soaking in a lot of money on a vehicle. So it's more than just keeping you safe. You want it for pleasure. You want to show your image. You want to you know, make it something that you're proud of. You're putting a, a lot of time and effort to, to owning a vehicle, so we want, want to make sure that, first and foremost, that it's safe. So where where are we going in the in the in the future now? Um, I um, I just showed Tesla. Uh, if you look at any new vehicle vehicles, and I'm looking at a new driver's ed, ed vehicle, I don't know if I'm I'm definitely not buying it right now, but in the next year or two, I'm looking at, at getting a new vehicle that has some of the safety features that will help to teach driving, like lane departure. When a student student leaves the road, 
that uh, the sh- sh- steering wheel shake a little bit to war- warn you to get too close to, to one of the lines. I um, also want to get uh, a, a backup cam- camera. Um, some of, the, some of these cameras gives you a bird's eye view. view. Uh, now we have a car, car that will uh, beep if you're, you're um, drift drifting. You've got uh, side mirrors that, that are warned that someone's in your blind spot. So you don't have to rely on, on checking over your shoulder. shoulder. So the te- technology is really, really helping out drivers. Now, of course, of course when we've got safety, safety devices in our cars, we're also, also thinking maybe I don't, have, I don't have to pay attention to my driving or I, I don't have to be that good of a driver anymore. And, and I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Uh, I don't think we're going to get to the, the point, though they do have, do have self-automated cars, where we're going to just punch our destination and jump in the bed of bat and play clay cards with best friend. friend. Um, I think, think you're going to still have to be behind, behind the steering wheel in case the, the computer acts up. But I found this video that, to be, be uh, interesting about automated cars, so I want to show it. This is Volvo's 360C concept car. And it's just one idea of what completely driverless cars might look like one day. That means cars without even a steering wheel that can safely navigate public roads entirely on their own. But with how much we hear about self-driving technology making its way into everyday cars, it's hard not to wonder, how much longer do we have to wait? Understanding just how far we've come with self-driving technology can be a bit tricky. To help define how sophisticated the automated technology actually is, the Society of Automotive Engineers classifies these systems using five levels. Level one is driver assistance, where the vehicle is able to control steering or braking, but not both simultaneously. Level two is partial automation, where the car can assist with both steering and braking simultaneously, but your attention is required on the road at all times. Both Tesla's Autopilot and General Motors' Super Cruise are examples of this. Level three is conditional automation, where certain circumstances allow the car to handle most aspects of driving, and the driver has the ability to temporarily take their eyes off the road. Level four is high automation, where in the right conditions, the car can take full control, giving the driver a chance to focus on other tasks. And level five is full automation. In this hypothetical situation, the car drives you, and there isn't even a steering wheel. So what level are we currently at? Most experts would agree, somewhere between levels two and three. However, one of their biggest concerns is the public's misconception that we're much further along. There's an incredible amount of confusion in the general public around the context of self-driving. In our survey data here, about 23% of American respondents believe that a self-driving vehicle is available for purchase today. And a lot of that has to do with, with statements by Elon Musk and others talking about the driverless capabilities and the self-driving capabilities of vehicles. These are systems that are made to assist the driver under the supervision of a driver. So is it simply the limits of these automated systems that's holding us back? Actually, there are a number of other factors in the way. For starters, our roads. Simply put, many roads, especially in the United States, are too much of a mess to support cars that can drive by themselves. So while many individuals out there are really working on the development of self-reliant automation, in this instance, a robot that's fully capable of making its own decisions in today's infrastructure, the reality is today's infrastructure is not well equipped for autonomy. In essence, potholes, core lane markings, and all the other crumbling aspects of our nation's infrastructure aren't going to support high tech well. In addition to more public roads needing signs and lane markings that self-driving cars can clearly make out, vehicles need to be wirelessly connected with that traffic infrastructure, as well as one another, in order to interact with the world around them flawlessly. Fortunately, automakers like Volvo already have technology that allows their cars to communicate with each other and alert drivers of hazards via a cloud-based network. This type of connected technology is being tested even further within driverless cars. At M-City, a 32-acre mock city and testing facility at the University of Michigan. So what are connected vehicles? When we say connected at M-City, we're really referring not to streaming Netflix into your passenger seat so much. Uh, That's a pretty solved problem in industry. Um, But in how uh, vehicles and infrastructure can be connected together for 
lots of other benefits like safety. The idea is a low latency way for vehicles to tell other vehicles and anything else that wants to listen uh, where they are and where they're going. So, once traffic infrastructure and communication is handled, what else do we need to address? Well, traffic laws. Governments have a number of important decisions to make in society's transition to self-driving vehicles. In the beginning stages, they'll have to define what weather conditions are appropriate for vehicles to be operating fully autonomously. This is due to the fact that many of these car systems can be disrupted by rain and snow. One industry they could look to for guidance is the airline industry, who doesn't hesitate to cancel flights in inclement weather. They'll also have to initially find a way for autonomous vehicles to safely navigate public roads amongst traditional cars. A possible solution could be designated lanes, similar to the high occupancy vehicle lanes found on highways and bus lanes found in certain cities. The government's kind of leaving it up to states to decide what, what's going on just because the technology's so new and they still don't really understand what, what it's going to look like in the end. Once the government does fully involve the, the federal government, they're going to they're going to have to speak to lobbyists, people that represent truck drivers and, and taxi commissions. They're going to realize that you know a lot of jobs could be lost, and, and that's going to be difficult. And then also liabilities. <laughs> if these cars are on the on the roads and they're getting into accidents, like who who is liable? With all these things considered, back to our original question: How soon until we have self-driving cars? I I'd say within the decade, it's going to be on highways. But if we're talking about being able to take your car wherever you want across the United States, being able to travel through New York City and, and sleep the whole time, I don't think we're anywhere close to that, probably several decades away from that. You know, car makers and tech companies are very heavily focused on the context of driverless technologies. Now, I'm not saying that that's not the future. It is the future. But as many have begun to admit publicly, that future is further away than anybody's realistically considered to date. We as humans are really good at predicting the future. We're not so good at the timelines. And the timelines to driverless technologies changing how I live and move is probably in the order of several decades, if not further away. How close are we to the Jetsons car? We're, we're still a ways away, in my opinion. It isn't really a matter of when these technologies will, will arrive to me, but can we be ready and, and utilize them in the best way possible? Okay, this video, video is a couple years old, and actually, we're further along than what they said. We're not between level two and three. We are now between three and four. And I don't, I don't know if any of you watched 60 Minutes, but 60 Minutes did a, did a piece like within the last year about uh, semi-tractor tra trailer trucks being self-aided. And um, we're going that, that way. Can you imagine going down the highway, highway and looking at a tractor to trailer, trailer and over and there's no driver? That big, huge truck, truck of whatever is inside, uh, they're actually doing it. They're actually testing it. Uh, of course, the truck drivers aren't too, ha too happy about it. They're losing their, their jobs. But they say they, it's, uh, they can go longer because truck drivers, drivers need rest. Uh, um, they predict that there's going to be crashes. That's still out, out for bait. Uh, um, but that's where we're going. That's technology. And I'm sure Amazon is testing it right now for delivery trucks where you know it's going to be self-automated and they're just going to drive to your driveway, driveway and no longer do they they put it on your porch they're just going to just going to drive in the driveway and leave it, leave it off to the side or, or maybe you have to put a box box something but uh, we are technology is really taking over but i always think that there will be people that will be driving cars i don't ever think we're going to get to the point where you're not going to have a steering wheel and, and not have to be paying attention attention um, let me go through some of the stuff. All right, right. In your notes, notes in reading, they talked to the HTSS being made up of three categories. So I want you, I want you to write down the three categories. The first is people. And why is this important? Is because now that you're behind the wheel of the car, you are responsible for you, your passengers, and everybody else that is outside the vehicle. So, you can do a ton of damage to, to pedestrians, to other other people in their cars by uh, you not driving, staying safely. So what I want you to write down for, for ages, who are you concern, concerned about, from what age to what, what age? I want you to put from age two or three 
to 9.99. The minute a child knows how to walk, walk and run, there's a, there's a chance that the child could, could get into your path, path of travel driver. A, th- a three-year-old doesn't have reasoning and judgment of how fast fast is coming. So, and you've probably heard this on, or seen on the back of tractor trailer trucks. If there's a runaway ball, there's there's probably a runaway child coming after it. So always assume that kids are going to do the wrong thing when it comes to step, stepping out of traffic. And why do I go go to 99? When, when do you have to stop to stop drive? They do retesting at at eighty, but there are a lot of people in their eighties and nineties still drive drive. So when you're behind the wheel of the car, if you can. Look at the, look at the driver because when you when you see an image of a, a person, like like I said, first impressions, you're you're making a determination when you see that it's an older per- person traffic light light. Oh, he's not going to be coming off the traffic light light that quick. His reflex are slow. He's maybe not even going to be look, looking. I'll be able to cut in front of him. On the flip side, you you see someone that's a nice sports car and it looks like it's a, you know, a college guy. guy. Okay, you know that he's going to probably pass, probably pass because you're going the speed limit. He's got that nice, nice vehicle. He probably wants, wants to go fast, so you start assuming he passed me. me. You make these assumptions on what you see and what you, what you think. It's going to help you in, anticipate possible problems out, out of the road. So everybody's going to have different physical and mental skills when it comes to how they use the roadway. So anybody that's in the road, Okay. Any, anybody that's on the road, it's our responsibility. So that's just to the next next category, which is, which is vehicles. And I usually ask a question every, every night. This is a question I'm asking for tonight. Uh, oh, oh, I get out of that. Oh, because I just gave you the answers just to some. Um, I want everybody to give me an answer of what type, type of vehicle you may encounter out on the roadway. I can't believe I just went to that next slide because it had like like six different types of vehicle vehicle so in the in the comment section on on youtube um see how many strange come up with something really strange for a vehicle that we may encounter okay um i'll i'll give you an example of how strange that i want you to, th- to think okay here's one i'm sure no one's no one's gonna come a street sweeper that's kind of an odd vehicle being right now on the road, but you know what? What in the spring, spring time after getting getting all the sand off the road, the road, you're gonna probably see, see street sweepers, and you're gonna have to think: Do I go go around it? Do I stay behind it? How fast do I, do I go around it? That, that comes with experience. That comes with judgment. So, my my example would be a a street sweeper. So I want want people on YouTube channel here here on students. Students, give me an ear. Who are you going to see on the road? Give me a type of vehicle that we may, we may encounter. The last category, and I'm going to wait for people to start responding. The last category is roadways. And I'll give you the examples for roadways. Uh, roadways would be um, mount, mountain, coastal roads, dirt roads. Oh, oh snow plow. Oh, no. Tractor. Yep. Good, good. Four wheeler, absolutely. They cross the road. I know there's no there's like a delay. It's 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 amazing. Recycle, good good one. Garbage truck, truck, good one. Bike, awesome. Other things that you gotta be thinking about, you could have named post car, ambulance, fire truck, um ice cream truck. 
Um, let's, let's see who else could we, um, things that you prob probably wouldn't think of, of and let me go to the slide. Uh, snowmobile, probably not. Um, they, they cross the road, but they're not going to be on the road that long. So, I mean, you do have to look, to look for them because you cross the, the road. So I'll give it, I'll give it to you. Um, but, uh, um, bicycles, skateboarders, and rollerbladers, what is, what I want you to write down your notes because a lot of people don't, um, th think of that. So what I want you to write down down in your notes is anything that that has wheels. Anything that has, has wheels has to go in the same direction as a car. As a car. All right. Um, some of the other things, a logging truck, you may owner. Um, let's see, what are some of the other ones that people have said? That, of course, construction truck, trucks. Um, so all these things you got to be thinking thinking about. Can you, can you imagine that if, that if you woke tomorrow morning and they said, I, I, I think actually calling for it right now because everybody wants to deregulate the police. They want to do away, away with the police departments. But, but can you imagine if we actually did? Look what's happening in some of our cities out west. Where they're just letting people do whatever they want. They're, they're breaking through window, windows, going to federal build, buildings, running things. We need laws, laws to tell you this, this, but we need laws. That's what protects us, what makes things organized and or orderly. Uh, that's how we can all get along. When you start letting one or two people control like roadway and they can drive as fast, fast as they want to go and the rest of us are still in the speed limit, limit there would be a danger to everybody. We want everyone going relatively the same speed, speed you know, within five to five times of each other. So I, I want you to write your notes that we regulate um, – By federal, state, and, and local. All right, federal, state, and local. That's, that's the what we can control and regulate what's going on. Going on. Um, the Na National Traffic Motor Vehicle Act, Act and the National Highway Safety, Safety Act, we in, pass an enable, enable law to um, protect us and to make, to make us safe. Uh, right now, distracted driving is the big issue in driver's ed. Um, with phone companies, we're trying to find find ways to get people to get get off their phone. So, so a lot of federal money is going towards um, ed educating and help helping them pass laws to make effective to to get people off their phone. Some of these these motor vehicle act, acts that they talk about in the textbook uh, comes back state level. Uh, we get billboards and um, special interest groups that will come to schools and start to spread out the word word about penalties and consequences of doing doing these things educate people and hopefully to help become a you know better safer driver driver and driver kind of does that that um to a certain certain extent but we don't get any federal money or state money uh we'll just funded by by the you pay but uh, we have to make sure that we do have to have law and order because if we didn't our roads would, would be total mess and we have to have traffic engineers and maintenance people people to make sure the roadways ways are kept and to be made safe. Um, so I want to show you show you this last video about how to road safer. Now, now what I want you to do while we're doing this, because uh, this was going to be part of I think your homework for for tomorrow. Um, because you've got enough to do tonight because I'm going to give, give you questions from chapter one on the remote, remote book page about 50, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I want you to, to, when we watch this video, is think of a place that you, you have driven or you've been, been a passenger and you think is unsafe. And what I want you to do is to go to Google Earth and try to type in Madbury, I'm sure, Durham, New Hampshire. Try to find, find that location, and, and I want you to want you to take a snapshot of it and send it to me. Text, text it to me, a picture of that that area, area, and then to text me what what is it dangerous, and what you think you could do or do or we could do to make it safer. Let me give give you an example, so no one can use this one. Um, I'll make it make it simple, real easy one. One up near the junior high, at the stop sign a bunch of bush bushes that are blocking your, your view all right so my solution would be to 
um, um, have those bushes and trees taken down and to have more speed signs, speed limit signs post posted on that roadway with a blinking flashing light to warn people of um, ped pedestrians, the junior high, high kids that are crossing at that cross crosswalk. I think if we took took down the bush, uh, lowered the speed, with speed limit sign, sign so people, what the actual, actual speed was up there. So I would take a picture of code, code up near the junior high, and that's what, I, what I'd write down. So that's what I want you to do. Not for tonight, but that's going to be for tomorrow. I just don't have it listed on this um, sheet here. But I want to I show you this, this video. Highway safety ought to be a priority. The tendency is to put back what was there. As a highway engineer, you should do anything you can to reduce the severity of an accident. This location may seem harmless to drivers that use it every day, when in fact it can be deadly and is loaded with roadside hazards. For example, the large tree located just inches off the edge of the pavement utility pole on the outside of the curve. Moving down the road a bit, an unprotected guardrail ends, which when struck can be deadly and penetrate into vehicles that lose control and come into contact with it. And over here is another large tree located just about a foot and a half off the edge of the pavement and in fact was the site of a fatal crash just last year. Each year in the United States, uh, we have a large number of deaths and serious injuries resulting from single vehicle crashes into roadside obstacles or roadside hazards. This has been a problem that's been with us for a long time and it continues to be one of the leading causes of death and serious injury in this country. Before about 1965 or around that period of time, the highway engineering profession's uh, primary mission was to make a safe roadway. There was also the feeling that once you got off that roadway, you're on your own. It's up to you to get out of a perilous situation. It's their job to provide a good roadway and your job to stay on it. About in the late 60s, the philosophy changed to if a vehicle goes off the roadway, as a highway engineer, you should do anything you can possible to either get them back on the roadway or reduce the severity of, of, of an accident. We learned a lot in the early days of the interstate system how to make these roadside features less hazardous. And so today, the modern interstate system exemplifies the designs that eliminate most serious roadside hazards. And since we've built many miles of interstate system in the United States, the problem has shifted somewhat. But we still have a very serious problem on the many miles of secondary road that are still out there. The most dangerous roads we have now are rural secondary roads. They have the highest fatality rates. There's where you have very little opportunity to recover if you run off the road. Almost half of all serious roadside hazard crashes occur on curves. Curves to the left are especially hazardous. Signs and pavement markings can help guide drivers around curves. But even where curves are well delineated, drivers can still lose control. And putting signs on roadside hazards isn't the answer. We need to do a lot more than that. So one of the major fixed objects uh, along our roadsides, and the one that accounts for probably more fatalities than any other single fixed object, are trees. This is an example of the most common problem in the area of roadside hazards. 
which is trees near the edge of the pavement, especially on curves. On this curve, there are trees right up against the edge of the pavement. And compounding the problem here is a complete lack of protection against drivers striking the trees. The trees are directly in line with any vehicle that loses control around that curve. After trees, utility poles are the most frequently struck object in fatal roadside hazard crashes. Every year in the United States, over a thousand people die in crashes with utility poles. On this pole, you can see the marking and the scarring that's obvious. This pole has been hit many times and is located in a way that will guarantee it will be hit again in the future if it stays here. The way to deal with this problem is also obvious. Utility poles can be set much further back away from the road, creating a clear zone. Utility lines can be buried underground, eliminating the use of poles altogether. And the use of breakaway utility poles is an option. It's appropriate to remove isolated trees that are located in dangerous locations. However, trees and poles are often located in groups, and when this is the case, it's often more appropriate to shield those objects through the use of a safety barrier. Guardrails are the most widely used type of safety barrier, but they're not used often enough to keep cars away from trees and poles. They're very effective, but if guardrails aren't installed properly, they can become hazards in their own right. One problem can be that while they're keeping cars away from one obstacle, they can direct them right into another. This guardrail has been placed in such a way that while it provides adequate protection in some areas, it actually leads vehicles directly into the base of a very large tree, which is very dangerous. The way to correct the situation is to extend the guardrail past all objects on the side of the road and only end or terminate once there's a safe place to do so. We have here a guardrail that's supposed to be protecting you against the bridge rail, but in actuality, it runs you right into the bridge rail if you hit the guardrail. And as we can see, that bridge rail has been hit many, many times. The proper design is to have the guardrail out in front of this bridge rail and attached to it, such that you have a smooth transition from one to the other. Another problem is the end of the guardrail itself, which can become a hazard if it isn't installed properly. Now we're at the location of a serious accident uh, with a mother and two small children that went off the left side of the roadway and hit this guardrail. This end treatment, which is like a knife edge, will impale a car, and that's what happened in this accident. The car hit the end of the guardrail, and it actually went up through the firewall into the passenger compartment of this car between two small children. This kind of guardrail is, is uh, outdated as of 25 years ago, but still there's a, there's a lot of these around the country, thousands and thousands of them. Most modern guardrails have a type of end treatment that prevents the impalement of a car. Burying the end of a guardrail can prevent impalement, but it's not the best answer because it can create a different hazard. The solution to this problem is to make the post break away and make it essentially an energy attenuator. This is one of the worst examples of roadside hazards that we've seen. Bridge piers like this one are often located very close to the edge of the pavement. They're especially deadly because of their large size and unyielding nature. At this site, a 36-year-old father of two small children died when his car veered off the road and struck an exposed bridge pier. We don't have to wait for somebody to die at a site like this to improve it. What we had at the site before was an exposed bridge pier that was extremely dangerous. Any vehicle running off the road coming into contact with that area of the bridge could result in devastating injuries. In place now is a properly designed guardrail that's attached to the exterior of the bridge pier. Along with that guardrail is a proper and safe end treatment that allows for a gradual deceleration of vehicles that run off the road. Where bridge supports and other rigid structures can't be safely separated from traffic with guardrails, an alternative is energy absorbing devices. Crash cushions and other devices can do an effective job of slowing vehicles down gradually. 
These concepts are simple. Wherever possible, provide a clear road sign that allows drivers a chance to regain control if they leave the road. If a clear zone isn't possible, make sure posts are designed to break away in a crash. And any remaining hazards should be separated from traffic by properly installed guardrails or other energy absorbing barriers. We at the federal level ran a uh, highway safety improvement program. Under that program, we provided funds to the states to improve high accident locations. That turned out to be a very effective Fixing roadside hazards is important because it can prevent a momentary loss of control or a minor crash from becoming serious or life-threatening. Engineering safer roads must become an even more important part of the national strategy to reduce deaths and injuries, now that speed limits and travel speeds have increased. There are funds available for renovating and improving highways. It's very important that some of those funds be allocated to fixing the roadside hazard problem. Obviously, we can't fix them all at once. Therefore, it's very important for highway departments to have sensible priority schemes so that they can decide which ones they should fix first. Roads are built by civil engineers, and civil engineers are civil servants, and they tend to do what the public wants. The only way you can get the state and local government to enhance safety on the roadway system is for the public to want that enhanced safety. And I think they do. Next time you're out on a country road, take a closer look. If you see hazards that shouldn't be there, especially on curves where loss of control is most common, ask yourself why. The answer is that for too long, solving this problem hasn't been a high enough priority. Raise the priority and help make safer roads. So basically from now on, I hope you approach driving uh, a little di differently that you look at the roadside uh, area as a potential dangerous place to wander into. So now trees will, will have more more of a wing to you when you, when you get too close to, to the edges. Anytime you drop the right top, the right side of your vehicle on the edge, it will pull, pull to the right. Uh, take a look at trees. You'll see on some corners where... Cars, cars have not been able to maneuver, maneuver around that turn correctly, either because of speed or bad weather, and they've hit those trees. And you could the bark just was removed from trees. Uh, uh, God rails, especially, obviously, are very dangerous, and we're, we're seeing that on all, all new roads, we're, mo we're moving toward those self-absorbing God, God rails, whereas some of the back roads still have some of the, the bad ones, some of the ones that could do damage if you were to hit them. Um, I only have a few more slots for this particular topic on, on HT, but I do want, want you to answer the questions on the remote face, Facebook page. Uh, uh, so remember, uh, uh, tonight I want you to read, read chapter 4 and 5. Uh, do the questions at the end of those chapters. That just, that just shows we did the reading. Uh, so just send that along to me. Um, the worksheet you will not be, be getting tonight. The car worksheet will be part of tomorrow's class. So we'll do that. Um... Any, anybody that wants to drive tomorrow, as I said, I think, think it's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, I happen. So you can text me. If, if you haven't done the pre-test, pre -test, please that. I'll have to make sure that I have a record of every, everybody that's it. Um, I think I've got birth certificates, everything else. Uh, I'm going to free up your schedule on Friday and Saturday. Saturday's going to be wide open. Remember, the only day that I do, do not drive is Sunday. So Saturday, I will, I will drive with you. Um, and then we'll t talk tomorrow about uh, next me and Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, and see how things go. I think you may have, have me off. I know it's Martin Luther King day, um, but we'll see if we're going to drive during that period and not. I think that brings us to the end of tonight, tonight class. Uh, remember to send me, send me any questions on information that we covered tonight. I know I, I kind of went through, the, through, through things quickly, um, I didn't spend too much time on the slide because I did want to kind of catch up. So tomorrow, tomorrow we finally get, get into actual information about inside the car, about how the car functions, things that we should know about cars, start getting into the actual part of, of driving. 
So really, really, last was an over overview of driver's ed to give you an idea of what I expect from you, what the, the state expects from you. Tonight, tonight was more of a history thing about where where we've been, where we're going, how to uh, purchase, purchase a with a title. We register it. We need to inspect it. Uh, what's going to happen when, when you go for your license? So uh, um, that kind of get, gets us to a good point uh, where we need to be. But like I said, if you have, if you have any questions, I know you can't always post it up here on YouTube, and, and sometimes you may not may not want to do a phone, but during class, but but do it after. I'll answer, I'll answer questions anytime. So that is that is it tonight. So have a good night. Um, I will have chapter one questions posted in about five minutes. So I'm going to close down this and get right to it. And we'll see you tomorrow night at 7.30. Have a good night.